A so-called good guy with a gun was shot and killed by police as they arrived to the scene of a gunman who had been killed by the good guy with the gun. Turns out the police had mistaken the good guy for the bad guy and shot and killed him. Now police say that Johnny Hurley, this is the good guy with a gun, confronted the gunman identified as Ronald Troike after Troike had shot and killed a police officer by the name of Gordon Beasley near Arvada and that's Colorado's Old Town Square. Um, so about 40 minutes before the shooting took place, Troike's brother called the cops asking them to check in on him because he said his brother was going to do something crazy. This news report gives you the rest of the story. As Officer Beasley walked westbound through the alleyway toward the square, the suspect pulled into an area behind him and parked his truck. The suspect exited his vehicle with a shotgun and proceeded to run towards Officer Beasley from behind. The suspect yelled at Officer Beasley, at which time Officer Beasley stopped, turned, and was immediately shot twice by the suspect. The suspect then proceeded to shoot out windows of patrol cars parked in the area nearby and fired shots into the air as well. The suspect then returned to his vehicle and exchanged guns he then went back towards the square. Mr. Hurley then confronted the suspect and shot him with a handgun. The threat to our officers and our community was stopped by a hero named Johnny Hurley. Johnny's actions can only be described as decisive, courageous, and effective in stopping for the loss of life. What happened next is equally tragic. A responding Arvada officer encountered Mr. Hurley, who was holding a rifle and our officer shot him. So how do the cops know who the bad guy is? How do they know the, who the good guy is? They showed up and they thought, this is a guy with a gun, he's the threat, and they shot and killed him. And so these are the kinds of situations, the scenarios that I never hear proponents of lax gun regulations discuss. Because cops aren't just gonna automatically know who the good or bad guy is. So especially when it comes to some of these states that have legalized um, open carry. Okay, but how, how, are, how is law enforcement supposed to know that an individual doing open carry is a good person or a good guy? I, it actually puts decent people's lives in danger and it's just incredibly ridiculous. But um, as the uh, cops had said uh, in, in regard to uh, Hurley, the good guy who got shot and killed, um, that he did not hesitate. He didn't stand there and think about it. He totally heard the gunfire, went to the door, saw the shooter and immediately ran in that direction. And yeah, he was the good guy. He risked his own life to save others and then he got gunned down by police. Yeah. So, look, there's a couple of lessons to get out of this story. First of all, um, you know, progressives want to um, bring in mental health professionals to deal with mental health situations, but this was originally a wellness call. So, uh, understand that there's still danger in, in these situations, and sometimes you're going to need police along with the social workers to go and, and handle a situation like this. Doesn't mean you shouldn't have mental health professionals there, you should. And in the overwhelming majority of the cases, nobody gets shot and you don't need to go in as aggressively as police often do. But in some situations, you have a very real threat. Now, why do you have that threat? And this is the one thing that I've said now dozens of times that I have tremendous sympathy for the police on. Everyone has guns. And so there's more guns than, than people in America. So what does that mean? That means the police are going to be justifiably jittery, right? Because uh, remember, when everybody has guns, that means the most unstable, prone to violence portion. Now, remember, most the overwhelming majority of people with mental health issues are not at all violent. Okay, but some percentage of the country does have issues where they're prone to tremendous violence. That's just a fact, right? They all have guns because if you're not prone to violence, you're not gonna have the gun anyway, right? Now, it's there's a mixed bag, and you might be a hunter and you have the gun, etc. There's a broad range of people who have guns, right? But if you're prone to violence, you're very, very likely to get a gun, okay? And so when you have some, an episode, and then you already have your AR-15 and your uh, shotgun and all these things, mm -hmm. this kind of stuff happens, right? So I get why cops wanna be careful. But then look at the last half of the story, and there's a really important lesson in there. They come and they shoot the guy instantly, right? Now, I get it, 
they got him, probably have a report that an officer is down, right? And he got it ambushed in the video, it looks like the guy shot him from the back, right? So you, you're, they're walking into a situation that might be an ambush. So I understand why they're super nervous, right? But that's why we used to say freeze, put your hands up. So in case it was a good guy, in case you didn't know, right? And so here, obviously, they didn't ask any questions. They just saw the guy with a gun and shot him dead. And it turns out this was a super rare situation where a good guy actually did help right. with a weapon. And the thanks he got was he got killed. Um, that's why I look, this is a story that shows you both sides wrapped in one story. Understand why cops get nervous, but understand why cops should still nonetheless ask the person to put down the gun just in case they're n not a killer. And yes, that happens. And look, the, I don't wanna go through the whole litany, but Tamir Rice, 12 year old, had a toy gun. They didn't bother to ask if it was a toy gun. Uh, Crawford in, in, in Ohio again at a Walmart picked up a BB gun from the store. Mm -hmm. They didn't bother to ask, hey, are you shopping here? They just shot him dead, both in two seconds flat. That's why it matters that we teach our cops. Yes, this is sometimes can be a very dangerous job, especially with all the guns uh, in America, but it's not optional. You've got to tell them to put the gun down first. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun, but you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.